Hello, I'm Jamie, and in this lecture we will be talking about how molecular dynamics actually works. In the previous video, we learned a little bit about the history, and now we're going to jump right in to the theory. So let's start with the alanine amino acid. In molecular dynamics, we don't just look at the amino acids of a protein or the atoms of a protein based on what the atom type is. We also label each atom based on where it is positioned in space. So, for example, um, I'll say that again. So, for example, the carbon atoms here are all in different points in space. One carbon is attached to two oxygens. One carbon is attached, the center carbon, is attached to two carbons, a nitrogen and a hydrogen. And the carbon on the left is attached to three hydrogens and one carbon. So each of these three carbons is given a different carbon type. There's other hydrogen types, which are shown here in different shades of gray. One nitrogen and two oxygen types. And based on the types of atoms that are within this amino acid, we can push the atoms through time using molecular dynamics. How we do that, we'll come to in a second, but let's just say we go through one time step of molecular dynamics trajectories. And what we see is that there's these arrows on each atom pushing it through time. And in the next time step, after pushing those atoms through time, there's a rotation where the nitrogen moves to the right, the hydrogen attached to the center carbon moves up, and the carbon on the left moves down. What's happening here in a time step of delta t? We're performing molecular dynamics. How did we do this? Essentially, we did Newton's equations of motions. So on the left is r of t, or the position of all the atoms of alanine at time t, and the red arrow here signifies moving those atoms based on the velocity vector v time, uh, time t times the delta t, or the change in time. That equals the positions of the atoms at time t plus delta t. Okay, so where do we get the velocities, or the v of t? That comes from taking the acceleration uh, at time t and multiplying that by the change in time and adding that to the initial velocities. Okay, so then how do we get these initial uh, acceleration vectors? Good question. That comes from Newton's equations of motion as well. Force equals mass times acceleration. So once we have acceleration, we, ha we get acceleration from force, and force itself comes from the negative derivative of the potential energy, or V of R. Okay, so we've gone through four equations yet, and we still don't really know where things start from. V of R is the key, the potential energy. And that's what's on the next slide. Okay, so V of R is the force field. It, de it defines the energies of the atoms based on the bonds between atoms. The potential energy of a bond is dependent on the spring constant Kr, and it has an equilibrium distance Req, and that is shown here with two atoms in blue and the harmonic bonds push arrows showing springs pushing in and out. Then there are energies based on the angles between three atoms, atoms i, j, and k, and there's an equilibrium angle called theta eek shown in this equation here. Then there are dihedral angles that are between four atoms and a rotation about the central bond. So here we have atoms h, i, j, and k, and a dihedral angle is the rotation about the bond i and j. And finally, there are through space energies, van der Waals and electrostatics. And so each atom is given some information. It, it is either a carbon, it's connected to a bunch of other different types of atoms, and each of those pairs of atoms in a harmonic bond has different spring constants. Each of those pairs or groups of atoms in three atoms in a harmonic angle has different uh, spring constants as well for that angle. And so with this equation, we're able to step molecular dynamics trajectories through time. What you'll notice most importantly here is that we're not just doing this for a few atoms, but the potential energy is the sum over all the bonds, all the angles, all the dihedrals, all the van der Waals, and all the electrostatic energies for all the atoms in your trajectory or in your molecular dynamics simulation. So just as a recap, from there, we calculate the force based on the negative gradient of this potential function, and using Newton's equations of motions based on the force calculated from this equation, we can then calculate the position, or r of t, of all the atoms of a protein at any point in time. So that sums up 
the MD Force Fields lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. And next, you will hear a little bit about how to set up your system for molecular dynamics using minimization and equilibration techniques.